sun calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I'll wanna settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on So if you wanna join me for a while Just grab your hat, we'll travel like that's old style Maybe tomorrow I'll wanna settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on Maybe he's lost or something. It doesn't look very lost to me. You know, on the other hand, maybe he's got more sense than we do. Could be. Let's get out of sight. Thanks, friend. Right now, we need one. I never thought it would be the four-legged variety, but uh, on behalf of the two most wanted people in town, I... I don't believe what I'm seeing.
Are you sure you want these? Sophie shortcakes are just as good and they're on special today. Of course, I went to a circus once when I was a kid. They had a dog act that jumped through flaming hoops. But this... I have never encountered. Ah, good, you found them. Right, that'll be six seventy five. Mm -hmm. huh? Oh, five, six, seven. All right. Have a good day. Tomorrow it'll be a polar bear with a credit card. And now we go over to City Hall, where Mick Jefferson is speaking to the mayor himself. No. No, I will not let my son marry the Conrad girl. Could anyone let their son marry a Conrad? But, Mr. Mayor, isn't it true that you and Mrs. Penelope Conrad were once sweethearts? Now, listen, son. You go around making irresponsible statements like that, and I can find a place for you in the city jail. Earlier today, I spoke with Mrs. Penelope Conrad at Conrad Manor on the west side of town. I'd much rather my daughter become a cocktail waitress than a Montgomery. And if the mayor's son does not leave her alone, I'm going to take after him with a shotgun. But isn't it true that you and his honor... If you even suggest that I've ever had anything but contempt for Mayor Montgomery, I'll take after you with a shotgun, too. This is Mick Jefferson from Mrs. Penelope Conrad's Country Cottage. She's got no right to do this to us. I mean, we're old enough to get married, aren't we? And we're certainly not breaking the law. Right doesn't come into it, Penny. It's money that counts. Between your mother and my father, they have enough of it to buy anything they want. And what they want right now is that we do not get married. Gee, there's got to be some way we can beat them. We've got the license. And I've got the ring. All we need is... Wait a minute. Who's the one person who can't turn us in for the reward money? We want to get married. Of course you would. They're here! You come with us for peaceful? Or otherwise, what's it going to be, fella? Good afternoon, Miss Penny. Nice to have you home again. Mm, I wish I could say the same, Bellas. Lost just to how you, sir. Have I better days? Thank you. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Madam, we'll see you in the drawing room. And now, gentlemen, if you'd take up your positions outside the house. <laughs> Miss Penelope, madam, and Master Chester Montgomery, Jr. Mother, how could you? How dare you? That will be all better. Mother, I can't believe you. You know, you have no right to do this to me. I'm old enough to run my own life, and I'm certainly old enough to get married. You know, you made me feel like a bloody criminal, hire a detective to get after me. I mean, come on. What did I do so terribly wrong? I really can't believe you did this to me. I have never been so humiliated in all my life. That'll be quite enough, young lady. Not only have you inherited your father's Latin looks, but also the unfortunate Latin lack of self-discipline. You may go to your room. Well, I'm not finished. Oh, I beg your pardon, Penelope, but you most certainly are. Go to your room.
Stand right where you are, young man. Bellows, please dismiss the rest of the servants and take the rest of the day off yourself. Yes, madam. Thank you very much, madam. I hate to air domestic unpleasantness in front of the servants. And I suspect that Penelope and I are in for a great deal of unpleasantness until this matter is settled. We're going to be married. <laughs> my dear young man, that is unthinkable. Now get out of my house and out of Penelope's life. I'll get out of your house. But you haven't seen the last of me. Hey. Hey, friend. How did you get here? Huh? Come on, will you? I want to leave. I don't want to leave. Not without Penny. I changed my mind. You mean you will stay out of Penelope's life? I mean, I'm not going to leave your house. I beg your pardon. Not without Penelope. What is this? This is what you call a sit-in. This is outrageous. I'm going to call the police. Go right ahead. They always bring reporters. And I've got a thing or two to tell them about this whole business. Especially those detectives you sent after us. That's illegal imprisonment. Or maybe just simple kidnapping. Get out of my house. I think I know one authority to whom you do bow. All right. What's going on here? Junior? Tell him to remove his son from the premises at once. She says that you she... Tell that lady that I'll remove my son as and when I see fit. My father says he'll... Kindly remove... remind him that this is my house. She says Could that you this... please tell her that what she calls this house, uh, this shack... Oh, knock it off! I beg, I beg your, your pardon. pardon. I'm sorry, Dad. Miss Conrad. What I meant to say was, why don't you just cut out the middleman and argue direct? Because I have not spoken to that woman for over 25 years. 27, and I see no reason to start now. Why not? Because we are not speaking. Everybody knows that, but why? Why? Ask your father. I just did. Well, then ask him about his lady bareback She rider. was not my lady bareback rider. Oh, oh, no, she was everybody's lady bareback rider. <laughs> and I suppose if that sailor knew you were just uh, shipmates. <laughs> you take your nasty insinuations and your son and leave this house at It'd once. It would be a great deal of pleasure to get out of this mausoleum as soon as I possibly can. Come on, uh, Junior, we're leaving. I'm not. I said that we are leaving. Not without Penny. Well, how about that? He's not leaving. Hmm. No control over your son, huh? I'm going to my boudoir until you two decide to have the decency to leave. Who is this? One of your friends, I suppose. Well, I'm happy to see you have the class to step up in the world. Oh, you're not going to get away with that. I've got a few words to say about some of your friends, too. At least I have friends. The best that money can buy. So the rumors were true, huh? They were sweethearts. <laughs> Boy, talk about oil and water. Okay, what do we do now? <coughs> That's a good idea. Now is a good time for Penny and me to split in Dad's car. I've always told you that lying shows a great deal of disrespect. Don't permit a person to be who they are when you lie. Look, you lied about the sailor. That's how you got back into office. Constantly talking, never saying a thing. I never have made it to office if I'd hung out with you, I'll tell you that. Well, it is a blessing we haven't seen each other for 20 years. It's a mutual blessing. That's for sure. Penny? Janet. Oh, Where's Mother? Down the hall, having. 
having a knockdown drag out with my father. Your father is in mother's house? In the flesh and in fine form. This is our chance to get out of here. Dad and that old witch of a mother of yours will be rowing for hours. O old witch? Yeah. Dad's really raking the old Harridan over the coals. Come on, let's go. You mean that uh, nickel and dime graft merchant is harassing my mother? Graft merchant? Yeah, I demand that you get him away from my mother and out of this house. Oh, you do, do you? Well, excuse me, but I didn't notice when that overbearing mother of yours stopped being a suffocating nag and a monumental place you bore. Okay, if that's the way you want it. What? You still do want me to leave, huh? Okay. Give me one good reason why not. You're right. I don't want to leave. I want to marry her. Well, now what? What's this? <laughs> you think I should write her a note? <laughs> it's not a bad idea. When in doubt, apologize, hmm? Okay. Dear Penny. No? Uh, dearest Penny. Darling Penny. Not ever again. Don't worry, I never will, and you can bank on that. All right, Junior, are you uh, ready to leave? No, sir, I'm not. Well, good boy. I'm, uh, I'm going to find a drink somewhere in this mausoleum. Write him a note. I'm not too big to apologize. My darling. I love you. I always will. Hmm? You want to deliver it? Sure, okay. I'm sorry if I insulted you before, but that man infuriates me so. What's that? Oh, your friend, take this to him and tell him. Tell him. Just give him the note. Friend, you care to have a drink? What is that we have there? Yeah. Forgive me, I've always loved you, always will. Good heavens. By that poor woman. Of course. Yes. I must go to her after all these years. Yes. Yes.
Chesty. Penny, darling. Oh, Chesty. Chesty. Darling. Final insult. My own letter sent back. Probably didn't even read it. Well, that does it. My own note back again, no reply. Not even dropped dead. Yeah, you've been a great help. gathered together to join in wedlock this happy foursome. There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on Until tomorrow, the whole world is my home 